Hi, and welcome to this presentation. I'm really excited that you're here, and I thank you so much for your time with watching. Um, we're going to be talking about today a simple strategy to teach almost any math skill, the concrete representational abstract approach. And that's one of the approaches I use most often with my uh, students that I tutor, so I'm really excited to tell you about it. Let's get started. Um, I'm first going to tell you a little bit about myself, though. Um, if you don't know me, I'm Dr. Nicole Caldwell. Um, I'm an autism specialist and a tutor, and I mostly work with math and science. Um, but I do a lot of reading comprehension, reading other academic skills um, for my students as well, as well as work on their kind of communication and social skills. Um, I have a master's degree and a PhD in special education, both of those with an emphasis in autism. And some of my certifications are um, elementary education teacher, special education teacher, uh, uh, kind of preschool actually through 12th grade. Montessori Elementary, and um, I'm also working on some certifications in Pivotal Response Treatment, PRT, which I really love. And I am the founder of those two websites that are listed there, and you can click on them for more information about me. I'm gonna jump into our topic now. Um, so I'm gonna kind of give you a brief overview of this CRA approach. So basically what we're doing with this approach is that we're taking kind of um, any math concepts that are more abstract, and we're wanting to demonstrate them when we're first teaching, demonstrate them to our students with concrete objects and pictures. And we're gonna look at some examples of that as we go on. Um, so what this helps our students do is that it gives them an understanding of the core concepts behind each math problem. So it's giving them a really good foundation of what's happening before we're expecting them to kind of do it on their own. Um, and so there's some research to indicate that this can help close gaps in mathematics knowledge and I use it a lot for my kids who have learning disabilities or learning differences, and it really is helpful for that. So, um, as you can probably tell by the name, it has three stages, um, C, R, and A. And our first stage that we're gonna be looking at is the concrete stage. So when we start to teach a math concept, we want to use um, physical, actual objects that they can move around with their hands. Um, teachers a lot of times call these manipulatives. So, but they're basically any physical, physical, excuse me, objects such as blocks or toys. Um, these are actually, these ones pictured here are little buttons that you can kind of sew um, for a fine motor skill practice. But what you're gonna do is take them and kind of model the math problem with these physical objects. So in this example here, we have addition. Um, and if you look at the green stars, we have two plus three, and then group them all together at the end to equal five. So that's a really simple example, but we're gonna look at some ways you can apply that to other things. But the bottom line is when we're first teaching, we wanna show it with physical objects to help really let the students know what's happening behind the numbers, if you will. Okay, so stage two um, is the representational stage. So after we've shown the student how to do the math skill we're working on with objects, we want to move to kind of drawings. And I think it's helpful a lot of the times to draw the same object that you were working with or maybe use clip art of the same objects you had at first. You can kind of see my attempt here at drawing stars. Art is not my strength. Um, but so what I've done here is done the same math problem, except for now I'm showing it with drawings of the stars instead of the physical objects. So this stage is kind of like the bridge building stage between the physical object and then the next stage where we just have the numbers only. So this is kind of transitioning that student from having physical objects, and now we're looking at it written but with drawings. And once the student has practiced at this level, then we move on to stage three, the abstract stage. And in this case, we're using, um, problems with the written numbers. So here we just have the basic math problem that we looked at with those other two ways. But once we've shown it in those other two ways, now we can kind of look at it as just the numbers. And so this is what's really great about this strategy too. Um, one of my favorite things I do when I work with kids is to use their interest as teaching tools. So whatever they love, I try to bring it into our teaching. So what's perfect about that for this strategy is that you can use a child's you know, favorite characters, figures, toys, blocks, anything they really like that could be used to you know, physically move around and show the problems, little toys or anything. We can use those at the concrete stage. We can use their own toys, like trains are a really great example. And especially for things like adding and subtracting, you can add and subtract train cars hooked onto the, the train engine. Um, so we can use that at the concrete stage. 
And we can also use drawings or clip art, digital images um, for the, the drawing or the representational stage. So that way it's kind of more fun for the kid usually um, to have that item that they like being used in, in the learning activity. So that's really fun to do and I enjoy doing that with my kiddos. Okay, so that's kind of the basics. It's a pretty simple procedure, um, but there are some things I like to do at each stage. So for each stage, you're gonna do these kind of procedures. So you'll do them at the concrete stage, and then you'll repeat all these steps I'm about to show you at the representational stage, and then you can repeat them again at the abstract stage. So you do them with each one. We're gonna go through those now. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is to demonstrate the math concept um, and model solving the problems while the student watches. So you're gonna basically give a demonstration to show them how it works um, so they'll know. Then, um, you're kind of going to do what's called guided practice. So you give some problems, um, and if you're at the concrete stage, you'll give the student the, the toys or the manipulatives or the items so they can work on that. So you will give them a problem and you'll help them and guide them as necessary, give them any prompts or cues that they might need, um, but you're kind of starting to transfer some of the independence of creativity to that student. Then, um, you're kind of going to want to give the child then a chance to do it more independently. So you'll give them some independent practice and you can still be there, you know, to watch and answer questions and help if you need to. Um, but we want to give them some more independence after we've showed them and then after we've worked some together, then we want them to do that a little more independently. And you can do that at all three stages. Um, so I put one more note on here. When we're working at the abstract level, um, that's when we can add in some maybe other strategies like mnemonics. Um, to kind of help students memorize some problem solving steps <clears throat> in addition to having that concrete understanding of it, which is important rather than just rotely memorizing steps without understanding what's happening. But at this stage, the abstract stage, we can introduce some of those little memory tricks if we need to do that to help our students. I think one I remembered from, you know, when I was a student, um, you know, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally to remember the order of operations. You can kind of bring in some of those little tricks at the abstract stages where I would put those in. Um, okay, so just since I'm, um, you know, a big research person, I'm kind of a research nerd, and I use that term in a good way. I love to read research. Um, I kind of wanted to share a little bit about the, about the research support for this approach. So this strategy, as we've talked about, is kind of can be applied to a lot of different math concepts, and I'll show some more examples of that later. And we can use it from basic math, from when we have younger kiddos or even older kiddos working on it, adding and subtracting, and it can even apply it in cases like algebra. So it's kind of a very versatile strategy. Um, and the whole model of this CRA approach, it includes a lot of components that are considered research-based or effective teaching strategies. Um, it includes visual supports. We're showing the students with the object and with the drawings, kind of what's happening behind the scenes, if you will, of those numbers. So it's got that, we're showing them with those visual supports. It includes lots of opportunities for teacher feedback during that guided practice that we talked about. Um, and it gives that guided practice as well as the independent practice, which are considered really effective teaching approaches. And I'm not gonna get too much detail into systematic and direct instruction. Um, but it's part of the, those uh, components we talked about where you teach at each stage with the modeling and the guided practice. Um, those all go into that. And if you're familiar with special education, you'll know those terms. It's kind of beyond the scope of this presentation. But just know that's an effect, considered an effective model overall. Um, explicit instruction, we're giving our teaching in a really clear and unambiguous way. So we're straight up showing the kids this is how it works. And we want to make that as clear as possible. And those, um, the three stages really help with that as well. So these are all considered kind of research-based effective strategies, so they're really good to use with this approach. And they're all parts of it, actually. <laughs> all right, a few tips. Um, I would suggest making sure that you're using the same vocabulary and teaching procedures uh, consistently across each stage. So if you're saying, like if we're using the addition example, you want to say 2 plus 3 equals 5. And you're doing that when you're using the, the little star toys. You want to make sure you're using that same terminology when you're using the drawings, saying you want to still say two plus three instead of 
two and three or two combined with three, don't change the vocabulary you're using between each stage. You will want to work on that with a student so they will know different ways to talk about math, but when you're first teaching it, I would be kind of consistent with the vocabulary and terms that you're using. Um, for more tips, I have a bunch of articles and books in the reference list at the end of this handout, and you can download this handout if you haven't already. So I'm going to link to those, and if you want to dive a little more deeper into this, I would suggest checking those out. There's a few really good ones on there, and I'll point those out when we get to that section. I believe next are our examples, yes. So I am not going to go really deep into these examples, but I have here some links for different ways to apply this to different math concepts. So I've broken it down by category. If you click on each of these, you'll see some ways to do the concrete and representational stages um, for addition and subtraction on these links. On the next page, here's some examples for multiplication and division. You'll wanna check those out if that's what your child is working on. And you can click these links directly from the handout that you'll have when you download it. There's some examples here for place value, if you're working on that. There's a few examples for fractions, and a lot of us have seen fraction circles in different pieces, and you can even use stuff like making a pizza, which is really fun. So those are some concrete kind of ways to do that, but you'll see more at these links. These are a few other examples to kind of some more, I guess, advanced math concepts. There's ways to apply it to this as well. Um, you can use these examples and then also just kind of be creative with what your child is working on to think of some ways that you can show the concept with physical objects, but these are some good examples to check out. All right, now these are the resources I was telling you about. Um, the first one there is a book, and this book is really, really excellent, and I think you can click that link and it will take you to the book on Amazon. But this is one of my favorite math books and I really like it, so it's very helpful, particularly if you have a child or a student who is, is struggling with math. I have also, that next one there, I've also written a blog post about this topic, which goes into a little more detail about a few things. And so you'll find it at that link, it's on my website. The last three there where it says articles, those are some research studies. And they go into a whole lot of detail, as research does, about um, this approach. So if you really want to learn a lot more, those articles are fantastic. I would recommend checking those out. These are the references. Um, a few more in addition to those articles I mentioned, these are some ones that I've referred to throughout the presentation. So if you saw something that sparked your interest at the beginning of the presentation and wanted to read more of the articles probably in this list. I think that might be it. That's it. It's a quick and easy strategy. The kind of the trickiest part is thinking of ways to show it sometimes, but it's a great approach. You can use it for lots of things and use it with almost all of my students. So, but if you have questions about it, please feel free to email me or comment on the social media posts where I'm posting this video. And I thank you so very much for being here. Have a great day. Thanks so much.